Uganda took the unprecedented step to shut down social media access ahead of its elections. Was it the right thing to do or the wrong thing? Let's discuss that. This is Tone's Take with your host, Tony Davis. Well, good evening, folks, and thanks for tuning in. So, yeah, let's talk about this. Ugandan President Yoweri Museveni, I'm hoping I pronounced that right, said this Tuesday that his government has shut down the social media sites like Facebook, uh, basically accusing them of arrogance after the social media networks basically removed Ugandan accounts linked to uh, President Yoweri Museveni's uh, re-election campaign. This is basically like America in a way, right? You've got, you know, all these accounts that start to pop up to say, hey, I support Trump or I support Biden, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, I don't know if anyone's seen some of these movies that have come out that have talked about social networks and how they basically influence you and things like that. And this Ugandan president is like, I'm not having none of that, not today, not ever. So he he's quoted here saying that social channel you were talking about, if it's going to operate in Uganda, it should be used equitably by everybody who wants to use it, mainly me. If it's not promoting me, then I want it gone. He kind of sounds like, the Donald Trump of Uganda, in a way, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but he said that of Facebook and a national address, if you want to take sides against a ruling party, then that group will not operate in Uganda. So Musveni was dressed in a military jacket. I won't read through all this. Facebook basically said Monday it had removed a network of accounts and pages that used fake and duplicate accounts uh, to manage pages, comment, or uh, on other people's comments, impersonate users, basically a whole bunch of stuff that they would find unethical anyway and is against their users term so they would delete it and um you know there's no immediate facebook statement but it's interesting that they would go that far in a country like uganda um and you know uganda united states kind of question how how important you know it is for facebook to be meddling really in the affairs of the ugandans but whatevs Museveni has ruled uganda since 1986 that's the year i was born so that's a lot of years <laughs> and he is allegedly um he's alleged repeatedly that foreign groups are trying to meddle in uganda's elections i don't know why can someone tell me um what is so important to international organizations in uganda because because i don't know why um he has accused his main challenger the popular singer and opposition lawmaker known as bobby wine that's an awesome name um of being an agent of foreign interests uh the atmosphere in uganda is increasingly charged out of the voting which you know that's not like any other place and, and around the world. I mean, it just seems like everywhere you go with elections coming up, and there seems to be a lot of elections, a lot of elections recently, there's just been a lot, there's just been all oh, this, this tenseness in the air. Um, so yeah, apparently 54 people were, were killed in Kampala. I'm not sure when this happened. In other parts of the country, in November, security forces put down riots provoked by the arrest of Wine. So Wine was arrested. Um, and then those deaths form a critical part of Wine's petition to the International Criminal Court to investigate alleged acts of torture, mutilation, and murder of civilian protesters by security forces. So, uh, you know, U.S. isn't that far off from, from a lot of this stuff happening. Um, you, he's 76 years old, the uh, current Ugandan president, and he uh, he has defied calls for his retirement, saying he has been reelected many times by Ugandans who love him. Gosh, this man sounds just like Trump. Uh, Ugandan polls are often marred by allegations of rigging, blah, 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 blah. So I, I posed a question. Um, was it right for President Museveni to completely block Facebook? Um, especially in an age where now we've just seen a lot of social media sites that have uh, completely blocked Trump. Uh, and as I spoke about in an earlier uh, take that, you know, these social media sites are sort of like the public squares. So they have a lot of uh, importance and they hold a lot of value in that. And if you're blocked on something like that and you are a very important person like a president and you can't speak, uh, there's there's some conflicts there in my mind. But I would love to hear what you guys have. I, again, I, I am of the the attitude that I think something needs to replace a Facebook or a Twitter or an Instagram if there's going to be public um, freedom of speech. There needs to be a virtual public square and it cannot be owned by a private company. But again, I'd love to hear your thoughts and your take on this. Uh, is it right for Uganda? Is it right for anyone, any country to do this if they don't like what a company is doing to take them down or because it's a private enterprise, should they be allowed to continue it? And should you just create something that's more public facing for, for you to, uh, you know, do whatever you want. So let me know your thoughts and I will see you all tomorrow. Peace out.